In my last video, we took a look at the AMD A6 5400K, which was a dual core processor. And while it is capable of doing some gaming, especially on lower end games, the more modern AAA games gave it a lot of problems, especially GTA 5, where it was completely unplayable and couldn't even render out the world um, in the correct way. So today we're gonna be using the same exact test bench, the four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, the one terabyte hard drive, the GTX 660, but for the processor, we're swapping out the 5400K for the much more capable 860K, which comes in at about double the cost, more like $50, but it does give you two additional cores for a total of four. Now the 860K is one of my personal favorite processors because of its price point and four true cores, as well as its ability to overclock, which we are not trying out today. We're gonna keep it at just 3.8 gigahertz, which was the same frequency we were running the 5400K at before. Now, while we're trying to figure out today whether the 860K is good for gaming, we're also gonna compare it to the 5400K at the end of the charts to see which of those two processors is better for somebody on an extremely tight budget and to determine whether the extra $25 for upgrading from the 5400k to the 860k is actually worth it. So let's go ahead and look at those charts. And as always, before we hop into the uh, actual benchmarks here, anything 60 FPS or higher is going to be in the loaded baked potato range. The baked potato, which is okay, is going to be 59 FPS uh, clear down to 30 and anything below 30 FPS is just going to be considered a potato. Now first up with the 860K being paired with the GTX 660, we have Overwatch on medium settings at 1080p and we have an average of 104, a 1% low of 83 and a 0.1% low staying above the 60 mark at 66. League of Legends was next with an average of 97, a 1% low of 65, and that 0.1% low did dip below 60 at 49. However, again, max settings, this was an extremely good experience. Getting on towards more of a mainstream gaming experience, we have Skyrim on the medium preset at 1080p. The frame cap of 60 FPS was left in place uh, to be consistent with the testing of the 5400K. However, if you are interested in it, it is possible to remove that frame cap by editing an INI file, and you can look up how to do that in the Steam forums for a more in-depth guide. All that being said, we averaged at that 60 FPS mark, so we were basically pinned at 60 the vast majority of the time we were playing the game. The 1% low was down at 53 and the 0.1% low did dip as low as 29 FPS. However, again, the gameplay was extremely smooth and playable. Heading on to Grand Theft Auto 5 on normal settings at 1080p with anti-aliasing off, I might add. The average was 53. Unlike the 5400K, this was a very playable experience with 1% lows hitting that 30 FPS mark and 0.1% lows down at 20 FPS. However, they were limited enough for me not to really notice it much while gaming. Maybe a stutter here and there. However, a very playable experience and indeed an enjoyable one. Now to take this a step further, we want to compare the 860K performance and how it averaged across the four games with the A6 5400K that we've already looked at. And of course, here we see the 860K dominate in every category. Not only does it nearly double up on the average FPS of the 5400K, but you really see the biggest difference in the 1% and 0.1% lows. The 860K was very playable across all the games I tested, whereas the 5400K was, especially Especially in GTA 5 completely unplayable and even in Skyrim it was not a great experience while gaming. It is worth pointing out, however, that the 5400K can be had on eBay all day long for around $25, with the 860K being more like a $50 price point. And if you look at just the processors, the price per frame rendered is actually pretty much identical, with the 5400K coming out slightly on top at $0.61 cents per frame, with the 860K coming in at 63 but as we know, that's not the whole story here. If you put the 5400K in a $300 system, the price per frame comes out to $7 per frame rendered. However, if you upgrade that to an 860K, adding $25 to the cost, which means the calculation here is based on a $325 system for the 860K, as it does cost that $25 more than a 5400K, you are still only paying $4 per frame rendered, making the 860K a lot better of a value for for budget gamers. 
So although the architecture is rather old by today's standards, the A60K can still hold its own when paired with an appropriately leveled graphics card. You're not going to want to pair something like a 1080 or a 1080 Ti with this particular processor because you won't be getting anywhere near the most out of your GPU that you can, but if you're still working on mid-tier or lower tier components like a GTX 660 or more modern examples like probably a RX uh, 480, 580, those mid-tier and lower cards would probably do very well with this particular CPU. So let me know in the comments down below if you're still using one of the older generation AMD processors, whether it be something like the A60K, one of the quad-core APUs like the A10 or the A8, or if you're still using one of the FX line of processors. And if you are, are those processors still suiting your needs or do you feel like you need to upgrade to something like Ryzen or one of the newer Intel parts like the i3, i5, or i7s? Let me know in the comments down below. So if you like this content, give me a like, share, subscribe, comment, all those things down below help out a lot. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. They are the same tag for your convenience. And as always, we'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos for my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.